Kalani's breath came in ragged gaps, a small body trembling as she knelt on the damp head, her tears mingled with the death on her cheeks, and her hand shook as she clutched the hem of her dress. Uncle, please, I swear, I won't tell anyone, please, let me go, she sobbed, her voice breaking with desperation. The four boys surrounded her, their faces shadowed by the looming trees. But they, the oldest of the group, loomed over her. A cold snare on his face, his eyes glinted with malice. Shut up! But this spat. His voice sharp and cruel. You're not going anywhere. Bayo, the youngest of the group, shifted uncomfortably. He looked at Tolani with hesitation. His fist clenched at his sides. Maybe we should just let her go. This isn't right, he said quietly. But they turned to him. His expression hardening. Go stand watch now. Reluctantly, Bayo obeyed. Retreating to the edge of the forest, where the dense foliage concealed the scene from view. As he stood there, the sounds of the forest filled his ears rustling leaves, distant birds, and tolani soft whimpers. His stomach churned with guilt, but he didn't dare turn back. Tolani cries grew weaker as Bode, Tade, and Kunle closed in around her. Please, please, she whispered, her strength fading. Bode knelt down, grabbing her chin roughly. Stop crying! You brought this on yourself, he hissed. Tade and Kunle exchanged uneasy glances, but neither spoke. The tension in the air was thick, but Bode's grip on the situation was unhidden. Tolani's sob became shallow gaps, her small hands trying to push them away, but it was useless. Bayo stood at the edge of the forest, every whimper and gaps driving a nail into his conscience. He pressed his fist into his palms, biting down on his lips so hard it bled, trying to drown out her cries. Why didn't I stop them? The question could not at him, but fear kept him frozen. Then suddenly the forest fell silent. The stillness unnerved him. Bayo glanced over his shoulder, his heart pounding. Seconds stretched into what felt like hours onto body that they and Kunle emerged from the trees. Their faces heavily calm, their shirts deserved, but their expression unreadable. Kunle was the first to speak. A wicked grin on his face. That was easier than I thought. But they smirked, wiping his hands on his pants as if cleaning away the fields. She didn't even put up a fight. But Bayo felt a sickening dread rise in his chest. He swallowed hard, forcing his legs to move as he approached the place where Tolani had fallen. The hair felt heavy like a weight pressing down on his chest. Guys, I think she's dead. By your voice trembled as he knelt beside her motionless body. His hands overed over her neck, searching for a pause, but there was nothing. Panic surged through him. She's not breathing. Don't touch her, Tadi snapped. The wide look in his eyes. His cheeks were red where Tolani had scratched him. A trail of blood drying on his skin. That stupid girl scratched me. If she wasn't dead already, I would have killed her myself. Only kicked a nearby rock. His voice laced with indifference. It's done. No one is going to miss her. Bayo stood frozen, his hand still shaking from where it had over and over Tolani's body. What have we done? The horror of the actions was sinking in, but it was too late. There was no going back. The low arm of bass heavy music filled the private suits where body Kunle and Tade lodged in plush leather chairs, their drinks glistening in the dim lights. The room was sleek, designed with dark wood paneling and model accents, giving it an air of exclusivity. They sat with the hair of men who owned the night, relaxed and confident, their conversations flowing easy between businesses, women and their shared past. But they took a long sip from his glass, the eyes clinking softly. His eyes gleamed with amusement as Kunle teased him. How's that your body, girlfriend? Kunle asked, leaning back, a smirk dancing on his lips. But they snorted, waving his hands dismissively. You mean Shalewa? That girl is a foolish girl, Jari, he said, shaking his head. Kunle raised an eyebrow, intrigued. Ha! What do you mean? I thought you were enjoying the ride. But they rolled his eyes, enjoying K. Bad guy like me. Right in my tetsies, and this girl starts talking about marriage. Imagine you. Marriage. He leaned forward. She wants to tie me down. Tie me down. Kunle let out a loud laugh, slapping his thigh. Ha, ah, Bode, that's how they are, these girls. They think a little romance means a ring. Tade, lunging with his shirt half opened, chuckled as he swelled his drink. Very foolish girl indeed. Who turns pleasure into bondage? He took a sip, a bitter smile creeping onto his face. If I had known better, I wouldn't have married Oluchi. Now I have to deal with all our wahala every day. The laughter filled the suit. As they bantered, the sound of stilettos clicking against the marble floor caught their attention. 
The room seemed to pause for a moment as a woman entered the club. Her presence throwing every eye in the space. She was stunning. A beautiful lady dressed in a red dress that clung to her figure like a second skin. The slit at her tiles revealed just enough to spark intrigue and her long dark hair cascaded over her shoulders. She remained under the dim lights. Her bold crimson lips coiled into a sly smile as she walked confidently towards the bar, her eyes scanning the room like she was fully aware of the attention she commanded. Men began to approach her. Drawn by her law, one by one, they tried their luck, but she declined each with a polite smile, her eyes glinting with amusement. From the suits, but their gaze locked onto her, a slow, predatory grin spread across his face. Excuse me, gentlemen, but they said, pushing himself from the chair with a lazy grace. There's a damsel in distress that needs rescuing. Queenly and Tadi exchanged knowing glances, chuckling. But they baba for the girls that they held. Raising his glass, Queenly followed with a mock salute, smirking. Go and conquer, my guy. But they adjusted his jackets, smoothing his shirt as he made his way towards the woman. His swagger was undeniable. His confidence was shaken. The other men fell back as he approached, sensing the shifts in the room. It was an ordinary man. It was Bode, and he never failed to get what he wanted. The woman's eyes flickered up to him as he neared, her expression unreadable. Up close, she was even more stunning. Her skin glued under the club's soft lightning, her posture poised and elegant despite the suggestive outfits. Bode flashed eyes, charming smile, leaning slightly towards her. I see. You've been turning down all these offers, but you haven't met me yet. Her eyes sparked with amusement and she tilted her head. Is that so? That's right. I can see you're looking for something different and I happen to offer that. But they said smoothly, his voice low and confident. He stepped closer, lowering his tone as if they shared the secret. How about we go somewhere more private? The woman's lips curved into a mysterious smile. She didn't answer immediately, but her gaze lingered on him. Calculating, after a bit, she nodded, lead the way. But they grinned, the trio of the chase making his pulse quicken. He extended his hand, which she took lightly, a touch soft but firm. Turning to his friends, he winked. We're hiding to the room, he announced, referring to the private suits they always kept on reserve. Kuli and Tade uttered in approval, raising their glasses once again. But they baba for the girls, Kuli repeated, laughing. Tade slapped the hand rest of the shear. Grinning like a proud spectator, but they led the woman through the club, his arm around her waist, guiding her towards the staircase that led to the exclusive suite upstairs. As they ascended, the music grew distant, the noise of the club fading into a low hum. The air between them was charged, but as they approached the private room, but his mind flickered with a strange sense of deja vu. Something about this woman felt different, but he brushed it off, his ego too strong to entertain doubt. The room was as luxurious as ever. Plush velvet couches, dim lights in, and expensive bottles of champagne on the table. But they closed the door behind them, turning to the woman, his eyes gleaming with anticipation. But when she turned to face him, her smile was gone. Repressed by a look of chilling calm, she stood in the center of the room, her eyes locking onto his, with an intensity that made Bode photo for just a moment. You don't even remember me, do you? she asked softly a voice cutting through the air like a blade. But they froze, confusion flashing across his face, a smile fluttered. What are you talking about? The woman's eyes darkened, a voice hardening. You don't remember Tolani, do you? The name eats body like a punch to the gut, his mind raised, dredging up memories he had buried deep. He took a step back, his pulse quickening. But before he could speak, she continued, I've waited years for this moment, she whispered. Her voice laced with quiet rage, but now you're going to pay. But his heart pounded in his chest as the woman stepped closer. A one sultry voice now cold and filled with menace. The name Tolani echoed in his head, dredging up memories he had tried to bury. The forest, the helpless girl, a pleading cries. His throat tightened, and for the first time in a long time, but they felt fear coil in his stomach. He swallowed hard, forcing a chuckle, trying to regain his composure. Look! If this is some kind of joke, but before he could finish, the woman's eyes flickered with an airy light, glowing amber like the eyes of a predator. A smile twisted into something sinister, and the hair in the room seemed to shift, growing heavier, oppressive. Suddenly, her skin began to ripple, 
Her form bending and twisting in ways that no human body could. Her limbs segregated, her bones cracking as they reshaped. Her fingers merging into scales that gleamed under the dim light. Her legs melded together, forming a long, thick tail. And her once beautiful face distorted into a mysterious visage. Her lips parting to reveal long, sharp fangs. But they stumbled back in horror. His eyes wild with disbelief. What? What the hell are you? He stammered, his voice trembling. The woman, no, the creature, let out a low, menacing hiss. Her body now fully transformed into a massive serpent, coiled around the room. Her scales shimmered, black and red. Her enormous head rising above him. The flick of her tongue sent a shiver down his spine. You don't remember me, the snake woman hissed. A voice now a deep, ghostly sound. But I remember you, buddy. I remember everything you did to me, to Tolani. But this breath came in shallow gaps. As he backed into the door, his hands fumbled at the handle, twisting frantically. But the door wouldn't budge. He yanked Ada, banging on it with all his mind. His voice cracked as he screamed, Help! Somebody help me! He yelled, panic surging through him. His fist pounded on the thick wood, but the music from the club downstairs drowned out his cries. No one could hear him. He was trapped. The snake advanced, a massive body slithering closer, filling the room with an unsettling grace. Her eyes, burning with malice, never left his face. But his heart raised, his body trembling as he pressed himself against the door. Desperation flooding his veins. Stay away, he shouted, but his voice was thin, fragile. He reached for anything, anything to defend himself, but the room seemed to close in on him, suffocating him in fear. The serpent let out a low sinister laugh. A forked tongue flickling in and out. You showed no mercy to a little girl and now I'll show none to you. Before Bode could react, the snake reeled back, a massive head towering over him. Then, with a terrifying speed, she launched. A jaw opened wild, revealing rows of sharp teeth. And she clamped down on his leg. Bode screamed, the pain shooting through him like fires as he collapsed to the ground, clutching his leg in agony. But the pain was only the beginning. A strange sensation began to course through his body, his limbs tingling and then stiffening. His bones began to shrink, his skin pulling tight, but the scream turned into a gapped cry as his hands shrank into tiny paws, his vision blurring. His body shivered and contorted, his size dwindling rapidly until he was no longer a man but a small terrified rat trembling in the corner of the room. He squeaked in fear, his tiny heart beating rapidly. As he looked up at the giant serpent that loomed over him, the snake eyes gleamed with satisfaction. Now you're the prey, she is. A massive form circling around him, a coil is tightening. This is your punishment, buddy. But they now a rat, squinked frantically, darting from side to side, trying to find an escape. But the serpent moved too fast, a body striking with precision, trapping him in a coil that squeezed the hair from his tiny lungs. In one swift motion, the snake opened her jaw, wild and swallowed him whole. The room felt silent. The serpent's form shifted back into that of a beautiful woman, a red dress flawless, her lips coiling into a satisfied smile. She glanced around the room, her eyes glinting with the thrill of vengeance. With a final glance at the door, she walked out, leaving no trace of what had just transpired. The club continued its reverie below. Oblivious to the nightmare that had unfolded in the private suit above. Bayo jotted awake, his breath coming in sharp, ragged gaps, his chest heaved, and his heart pounded so lightly in his ears that for a moment he couldn't hear anything. His skin was slick with sweat, the dampness of the sheets clinging to his body as he sat up trembling. No! The scream had barely escaped his throat, and now it hung in the air. The sound of his own voice unsettling him further, his eyes darted across the room. Disorientated, as though expecting to see the remnant of the nightmare clinging to the shadows, the room was quiet, parted in the soft glow of the moonlight filtering through the window. The rhythmic hum of the ceiling fan was the only sound. Slowly, his raising heart began to settle, but the terror from the dream clung to him. Refusing to let go, his hands were shaking as he wiped the sweat from his brow. Beside him, his six-year-old daughter lay coiled up under her blankets a small body rising and falling with the peaceful rhythm of sleep. She was oblivious to her father's torment, lost in her own innocent dreams. For a fleeting moment, the sight of her brought by her a sense of calm, 
a reminder of the only pure thing in this world. He exhaled shakily, trying to steady himself. It was just a dream. But no matter how many times he told himself that, the images refused to fade. The giant snake, its fangs gleaming under the pale lights, its coiling tightening around the man, swallowing him all. The man's scream cut off so abruptly, still echoed in his mind, and Bayo shuddered. He reached over and gently touched his daughter's hand, needing the connection, needing to ground himself in reality. Her skin was warm, and she stared slightly at his touch, but didn't wake. Thank God she didn't hear me scream. But that dream, it wasn't just terrifying, it felt real, too real. Bayo leaned back against the headboard, pressing his hand to his face, trying to make sense of the terror that had just consumed him in his sleep. He had dreamed before, bad dreams, nightmares that made him wake in cold sweat, but this... This was something different. This felt like a message, a warning. His mind flashed back to the details of his dream. The darkened room, the man terrified and scrabbling for an escape. The way the door wouldn't open no matter how hard he tried. Bayo remembered watching helplessly as the snake massive body coiled around the man, squeezing the life out of him. The final refined moment when the man's form had shifted, becoming a rat. And then, nothing, the snake had devoured him in one swift, merciless bite. Bayo rubbed his temples, trying to shake the images from his mind. What the hell is wrong with me? He muttered under his breath. He glanced at the clock on the nightstand. It was 3.47 a.m. He still had a few more hours until dawn. But there was no way he was going back to sleep, not after that. He got up quietly, careful not to wake his daughter, and padded slowly across the room. His footsteps were light, but every creak of the wooden floor seemed too loud in the dead of night. He made his way to the kitchen, hoping a glass of water would calm his nerves. Bayo stood by the zinc, staring blankly out the window into the quiet, dark street below. The glass of water sat untouched on the counter. Forgotten, his mind was elsewhere, still trapped in the nightmare. He couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the dream than his mind playing tricks on him. It was too vivid. The terror too sharp and the man, dear, there was something similar about him, something familiar, something that ignored a bio, though he couldn't place it. Taking a deep breath, bio tried to focus. It's just a nightmare, bio, let it go. But deep down, he knew better. The man in the dream, it was like he had seen him before. As he leaned against the counter, staring into the blackness outside, a cold realization crept up for him. His mind started to piece things together slowly. Like a puzzle he had been avoiding for years, but they whispered, the name slipping from his lip like a curse. The past surged back, unbeaten, filling his mind with memories he had tried hard to bury. The forest, the pleading cries of a little girl, the twisted laughter of teenage boys, his own guilt, his cowardice. He hadn't stopped them, he hadn't saved her. Tolani? Bayo's hand gripped the edge of the counter until his knuckles turned white. It couldn't be, he hadn't thought about that day in years. Hadn't spoken the names of those boys, now men, who had been his friends, Bode, Kunle, Tade. And now, that dream, the man being swallowed by the snake, could it have been Bode? His breath quickened. Was this some kind of sick warning, or had his conscience finally caught up with him after all these years? Suddenly, a soft voice broke through the eyes of his thoughts. Daddy! Bayo turned sharply to see his daughter standing in the doorway, rubbing her eyes, a small frame, Silhouetted by the dim light from the hallway, quickly tried to compose himself, forcing a smile. Hey, baby, why are you up? She shuffled over to him, a stuffed beer clutched in her arms. I couldn't find you, daddy. Bayo crouched down to her level, his heart heavy with guilt for waking her. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Daddy just had a bad dream, that's all. A big eyes searched his face. Was it a scary dream? He nodded, brushing a hand over her hair. Yeah, it was, but don't worry, it's over now. She hugged her beard tighter. Do you need a hug, daddy? Ox makes bad dreams go away. Bayo had clenched. He put her into his arms, holding her close. Yeah, I think I do. As he held her, the weight of the nightmare lingered in his mind. The past he had tried to bury was rising to the surface again. He could feel it creeping into his thoughts. Days went by, and though the tension from that night had dulled, Bayo couldn't shake the unsettling feeling that haunted him. But life moved on and today was a typical afternoon as he arrived at his daughter Vivian's school to pick her up. He spotted her standing under a tree, her face lit up with excitement, 
deep in conversation with someone. A soft laugh drifted through the air, curious, Bio squinted, trying to make out who she was talking to. Maybe it's a new form teacher she keeps measuring and he thought, as he walked closer, but when he saw who it was, his steps faltered. A woman knelt beside Vivian, her hands resting gently on the child's shoulder. She was stunning, her beauty striking him with an unexpected force. Her smile was warm and bright, her hair falling in soft waves that framed her glowing face. As she laughed at something Vivian said, her presence seemed to draw all the light around her. Dad, Dad, Vivian called out, snapping him out of his trance. He blinked, realizing he had stopped in his tracks, staring like a fool. The woman looked up at him, her eyes meeting his with a gentle curiosity. Mr. Williams, are you okay? Her voice was melodious, like a soothing melody that sent a shiver down his spine. Bio swallowed hard, feeling a bit flustered, huh? He stammered, wiping at his lips as if to erase the drew he was sure he had there. He straightened, composing himself quickly. Oh, hi, Vivian. Is this your auntie you've been talking about? Vivian beamed, gripping the woman's hand tighter. Yes, daddy. This is Auntie Tola. The woman stood up gracefully, extending a hand. Hello, Mr. Williams. My name is Tola, she smiled. A soft warmth in her eyes that sent his pulse racing. Bio cleared his throat, taking her hand in his... Please call me by you, he said, trying to sound smooth, but feeling anything but. Her hand was soft, a touch lingering in a way that made the stomach flip. How are you finding the school so far? Tola tilted her head, her smile widening. It's wonderful, actually. The staff are kind, and Vivian has told me all about her favorite activities. She's such a bright girl. Yes, she is, Bayo replied, his gaze drifting to his daughter who was looking up at Tola with pure adoration. I'm glad she has someone like you around. Bayo found himself feeling more at ease, drawn to Tola in a way he hadn't felt in years. Do you need a ride? Bayo offered, hoping she would say yes. Tola hesitated for a moment, before nodding. That would be lovely, thank you. The drive to her apartment was filled with light conversation, but Bayo couldn't help stealing glances at her. Her laughter was like music, and the way her eyes lit up when she spoke stirred something deep inside him. He hadn't felt this drawn to someone in a long time. When they arrived, he hesitated before saying goodbye. Thanks for the ride, Bayo, Tola said, as she stepped out of the car, and resting on the door. It was really nice meeting you. The pleasure was mine, he replied. That night, as Bayo talked Vivian into bed, his mind wandered back to Tola. There was something about her, a pool he couldn't explain. Hey, Vivian, he asked as he smoothened down her blanket. What do you think of Auntie Tola? Vivian smiled sleepishly. Her eyes half closed. She's the best daddy. She's so nice. And she tells me fun stories. Bayo nodded, smiling to himself. Yeah, she seems great. As he left Vivian's room, Bayo found himself thinking of Tola again. Unable to shake the way her smile had made him feel. There was something about her that intrigued him. Something that he couldn't stop thinking about. Meanwhile, in her apartment, Tola stood in front of the mirror, brushing her hair as she prepared for bed. Her thoughts were tangled, but one image stood out clearly. Bio, his warm smile, the way his eyes softened when he looked at her, how its presence seemed to fill the space around them. She couldn't help but smile at the memory, but as she reached for her necklace, her smile faltered. The snake-shaped pendant began to shift. Its surface shimmering before it transformed into a large real snake that coiled around her waist. Tola stared at the serpent. Her heart heavy with the reminder of who she was, what she was. The snake's eyes glowed as it is. Its present, a stark reminder of the vengeance she had sworn to carry out. There is no time for love, the creature seemed to whisper in her mind. Focus on the tax at hand. Tola clenched her jaw, gently stroking the snake's head as she whispered, I know, I won't forget. But even as she said the words, Bayo's face floated back into her mind, making her heart ache in a way she hadn't expected. After the snake slithered back into the pendant form, she sighed, finishing her skincare routine before lying down in bed. The moonlight streamed through the window, casting soft shadows on the wall. She stared up at the ceiling, Bayo's face flashing in her thoughts over and over. She couldn't stop thinking about him, no matter how hard she tried. Back at his home, Bayo sat on the couch, his mind racing with thoughts of Tola. Her voice, her smile, the way her eyes sparkled when she spoke. It was all he could think about. He shook his head, trying to focus on the television. 
but nothing could distract him from the memory of her. Viviani called out, open for some insights. Tell me more about Antitola. What else do you like about her? From her bedroom, Vivian called back. She's really nice, daddy. She's always happy to see me. I think you like her too. Making Bode smile, despite himself. Maybe he did like her, more than he was ready to admit. Both Bayo and Tolali are awake in their separate homes. Their hearts beating in sync with the unspoken connection between them. But while Bayo was filled with hope and curiosity, Tola battled the darker forces within her, knowing that her mission left little room for love.